Throughout our lesson plans in Launch and Beyond at The Right Stuff, we often talk about specific works of fiction to demonstrate what writers could and should do to create masterful stories. And from time to time, we do short readings from great works of literature to inspire our authors and stir their imaginations. Let Us Descend was published in 2023, the story of a woman enslaved who encounters powerful spirits as she endures a perilous and painful journey from a Carolina rice farm to a Louisiana sugarcane plantation, including a brutal weeks long trek between the two on foot. There's magical realism in the story, powerful entities that must be negotiated with, and longing for mother and women that make this a vivid and emotional story. You may be thinking, what, another book about slavery? Maybe you read enough about the experiences of enslaved people with roots or with the works of Toni Morrison, or maybe you just haven't got any personal identity with the shameful history of slavery in America and beyond in order to make reading about the experience worth your while. What can I say to change your mind? I can tell you that 4 million people were enslaved in America alone between 1526 and 1865. That every one of those 4 million people had a life, had memories, and many have living descendants today. I can tell you that we read about experiences like slavery, like the Holocaust, like the genocide of indigenous people, not because they were traumatic, but because they awaken our senses and inspire our own stories. If you are an author, it is incumbent on you to kindle your imagination on a regular basis. There is an element of powerful alchemy at hand here. You open portals and you stoke fires and you conjure spirits so that great characters will suddenly appear just as you have new stories to create. You might not be planning to write about the experience of slavery, but you never know when an enslaved person or the great, 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 great grandson of one suddenly appears in your pantheon of characters. A character that, like all of your others, is based on reality and history and relationships and archetypes, and whose motivations need to make sense within the conflict and tension of your new work of fiction. I can tell you that while not every one of us has the blueprint of slavery in our ancestral DNA, we all understand what it is like to not be free, to not have power, to not have a voice, to not matter, to experience pain, to feel profound loss, to wonder about our future, to seek autonomy and identity, and to want to reclaim ourselves from the binds of history so that we and hopefully our children are not subject to the torture or torment or simply inequity that past generations endured. We want better for ourselves and for our future descendants, but that means we have to know our history not just our personal history, not just our own ancestral history, but our collective history as humans on this planet. I can tell you this, or I can just share the words of Let Us Descend by Jesslyn Ward. The first linked man walks into the water, and when he pauses at the dark underwater ledge, he jumps, trying to build up momentum, but it is a long time before his head crowns the river and he only gets one breath before he sinks again. The man behind him is yanked into the water by the pull of the chain, and each man with him, until the last, a narrow-shouldered man stumbles into the shallows. This last man, I realize, cannot swim, and he is short, shorter by a head than all the other men. I recognize him. He kept the kitchen garden at my sire's house. Even in the winter, the little man made it bloom green. He balks with the metal poles. No, I whisper, but no one can hear it over the men's struggle to cross the river. Not the women gathering themselves on the ground around me, not the last of the Georgia men fording the water with their horses, and not the chained men who are being dragged downstream with the current. The line of their sinking and surfacing heads angling like slack fishing string down the river. The last man sits and leans on the bank, digging his heels into the earth, but he slides sideways and forward, closer to the ledge. Damn it, the Georgia man yells, and then his men scramble from their horses and down the bank and into the water, where they grab the chained men by their arms and pull hard, trying to save them from disappearing downstream. The last man falls sideways into the water, 
down into the midnight heart of the river. He makes only a little splash, and once he's down, there is no froth from his kicking. Yeah, the Georgia man yells, Paul, his men yank, wrestling with the chain men who rise from the river one by one, choking, gasping, hollering, and hoarse. The older man who sat near me after Safi left vomits water. The young one is coughing so hard he can't breathe, his face buried in the sand. Come, I say, against the river's murmur to the sky, to the sunken gardener. The white men heave, the half-drowned men stand and pull against their chains too, and fresh blood runs from their wounds to circle their wrists, trickles down their arms. But when the last man, the little gardener, surfaces, he floats. His face to the dark deep, his back to the gray cloud-occluded sky. The woman next to me lets loose one sharp sob. The chained men sit on their haunches, their mouths open, gasping breaths, while the white men cuss. The Georgia man lashes his horse, and it spins in a circle, crouching on its haunches, its eyes rolling white. The little chained man cuts the water easily now. In death, he is straight as a snake. When the Georgia men unlock the gardener from the chain, they let his body float down river. I watch until I can't see him anymore, until he disappears around a bend in the river, eclipsed by green. Sorrow, bees stirred by a strong wind, shaking their hive. Despair, the queen at their center, great bodied, pulsing, pushing, still. You don't have to have a personal connection to a particular experience in history in order to write about it. You do, however, have a responsibility to read and learn about the issues from our past that continue to affect the world, if only to become a great author. <laughs>